Hello everyone, let me welcome you to this new video learning where we're going to learn about Lambda. And I'm Samuel from Simply Learn and I'm very glad that you're watching this AWS Lambda tutorial now. One day at office in a growing company, there was discussion going on between two IT personnel. It was about the new role that his colleague Jessica has taken. Benjamin, the guy standing here, wants to know about it. And Jessica's job is new, different and dynamic and interesting too. She scale and manage servers and operating systems and apply security patches onto them and monitor all of these at the same time to ensure the best quality for application is given to the users. And Benjamin was awestruck with the amount of work Jessica is doing and with the time it would take to complete all of them. But Jessica being a very dynamic person very suitable for the job said it was easy for her to handle all of it and even more but that easiness on the job did not last longer as the environment grew more and more it being a startup company jessica was getting drained and was not really happy about all her job as she used to be jessica's manual way of scaling and environment did not last long and she was also finding out that she missed to scale down some of the resources and it's costing her a lot she needs to pay for the service that she was not at all using she sort of felt that she was at the end of the road and there was no way out from this manual task she was very desperate and that's when benjamin suggested something and that brought back the peace and joy jessica initially had Benjamin suggested about a service called Lambda that can ease the work that Jessica is doing at the moment. And Lambda, as happy as it looks like, it's a solution that solves the manual, repetitive work and lot more. And Lambda introduced itself as the problem solver and started to explain the following things, the very same thing that we're going to learn about in this series. So in this section, we're going to learn about the features of AWS Lambda and we're going to talk about what Lambda is and then we're going to talk about where Lambda is being used in the IT or in the cloud environment as we speak and then we're going to talk about how Lambda works and some use cases of Lambda and we're going to be uh, particularly discussing about the use case about automatically backing up the data that's put in the cloud storage. Let's talk about Lambda in detail. Lambda automatically runs our code without requiring us to provision or manage servers. Just write the code and upload it to Lambda and Lambda will take care of it. That means that we don't require any server to run or to manage and all you need to do is write the code and upload it to Lambda and Lambda will take care of it. Which also means that we can stop worrying about provisioning and managing servers. The only thing Lambda expects from you is a code that's working. AWS Lambda also automatically scales our application by running code in response to each trigger. Our code runs in parallel and processes each triggers individually, scaling precisely with the size of the workload. Scaling here is done automatically based on the size of the workload. Lambda can scale the application running the code in response to each and every trigger that it receives. Billing in Lambda is metered on the seconds. We only pay for the amount of time that our code is running, which means that we're not charged for any of the servers. The only payment required is for the amount of time the code is computed. With AWS Lambda, we are charged for every 100 milliseconds. We are actually charged for 100 milliseconds our code executes and the number of times our code is triggered and uh, we don't pay anything when the code is not running. Let's talk about what is AWS Lambda. Now Lambda is one of the service that falls under the compute section or the compute domain of services that AWS provides along with uh, EC2, EBS, Elastic Load Balancer. Lambda is also a service that comes under the bigger umbrella of compute services in AWS. And Lambda allows us to execute code for any type of application. With AWS Lambda, we can run code for virtually any type of application or backend services. All we need to do is supply our code in one of the languages that AWS Lambda supports. As we speak, the languages that are supported by AWS Lambda are Node.js, Java, C Sharp, Go and Python. And Lambda can be used to run code in response to certain events from other services. And based on the event, it can run functions and those functions can be of Node.js, Java, C Sharp, etc. 
Now let's talk about where is Lambda used. There are a huge number of use cases for Lambda and there are many ways AWS Lambda is used specifically in the business world. Let's talk about some of them. One use case is AWS Lambda is used to process images when it is uploaded in an S3 bucket. Let's say the object gets uploaded in an S3 bucket in a format that we don't expect it to be, which means the file needs to be formatted. So it gets uploaded in a raw format and AWS Lambda is triggered anytime a new object is added to the bucket and the images are processed and converted into thumbnails based on the devices, the other end device that would be reading the data. It could be an PC, it could be an Apple uh, machine, it could be an uh, Android phone, it could be an Apple phone, it could be a tablet, whatnot. So based on the devices, different formats, Lambda can get triggered and convert the video or convert the picture into the different format that it requires. Another use case for Lambda is to analyze the social uh, media data. Let's say, let's say we're collecting the hashtag trending data and uh, the data is received and it's uh, added into the Kinesis stream to feed into the Amazon environment and Lambda action get triggered and it receives the data and then the data is stored into the database which can be used by businesses for later analysis. And some of the companies that have gotten tremendous benefit using Lambda are uh, Thomson Reuters, Benchlings, Nordstorm, Coca-Cola, Robot are some of the companies to name at the moment that have received tremendous amount of benefit by using Lambda. Let's look at how Lambda works. In other words, let's look at how the complicated function behind the scenes work in a simple and in a seamless way. So here clients send data. Now clients send data to Lambda and clients could be anyone who's sending requests to AWS Lambda. It could be an application or other Amazon web services that's sending data to the Lambda. And Lambda receives the request and uh, depending on the size of the data or depending on the amount or volume of the data, it runs on the defined number of containers. If it is a single request or if it is less request, it runs on a single container. So the requests are given to the container to handle and the container which contains the code the user has provided to satisfy the query would run. And if you're sort of new to containers, then let me pause here for a while and explain to you what container is. Now container image is a lightweight standalone executable package of a piece of software that includes everything needs to run it like the codes, the runtimes, the system tools, the system libraries and uh, any other settings needed. And it is at the moment available both on Linux and Windows based application and uh, containerized software will always run the same regardless of the environment it's running on. And containers isolate software from its surrounding. For example, uh, there could be difference between a development and staging environment. So that's sort of isolated. And this helps in reducing the conflict between the teams running different software on the same infrastructure. All right, now that we know containers needed to understand Lambda. So if there are few requests, it uh, sends to a single container. But as and when the request grows, it actually creates multiple containers, shares the multiple requests to the different containers there. And depending on the volume, depending on the size, depending on the number of sessions, the more number of containers are provisioned. So to handle those requests. And when the requests reduce, the number of containers reduce as well and that helps in saving costs. We're not running any resources and paying for it when we're not using them. And in fact, we're not at all paying for the resources. We're only charged for the amount of time a function is running inside these containers. Now consider a situation where you have to set up a temporary storage and uh, as a system to back up the data as soon as the data is uploaded which is a near real-time backup. Now, a near real-time manual backups are nearly impossible and they're not that efficient too. A near real-time manual backups, that's what the business demands, but that's not near real-time backup 
that to a manual one that's not at all efficient even if we come up with a solution of manually backing up close to near real time that's not going to be efficient looking at the amount of data that will be put in and looking at the random times the data will be put into the source bucket and there is no way we can do a manual backup and keep it as real as possible but if that's still your requirement we can use AWS Lambda and set things up so AWS Lambda manually handles the backup. In other words, for an impossible or a difficult situation like that, AWS Lambda comes for the rescue. And this is what we do. Create a two S3 bucket. One would be the source bucket where the data will be uploaded and the other one is a destination bucket where the data will be backed up from the source bucket. And for these buckets to talk to themselves, it's going to require an IAM role and then for the automatic copy it's going to require an lambda function to copy the files from the source bucket to the destination bucket and what triggers the lambda function the lambda function is triggered every time there's a change in the metadata for the bucket and this data is then uploaded into the destination bucket and after setting all this up we can literally test it by putting a data in the source bucket that's going to automatically replicate or that's going to automatically copy the data from the source bucket to the destination bucket. All right, let's see how we can replicate data between two buckets. Well, we have a feature to cross region replicate in S3. That's a feature that comes along with S3. What if, if you want to replicate between uh, two different buckets in two different accounts? In those cases, we can use Lambda to replicate the data between the buckets. So you put one data or you put data in the source bucket and that data gets replicated to the destination bucket. And let's see how that's done. The procedure here would be to have two buckets to begin with and then create an IAM role that lets you access to pull data from the source bucket and put data on the destination bucket and then create Lambda files or lambda event or triggers to actually look for event in the source bucket and anytime a new data gets added lambda gets triggered copies the data from the source bucket and moves the data to the destination bucket and it uses the IAM role and policy for the needed permissions and in just a couple of clicks we have set up a temporary backup system that can run seamlessly without any manual intervention and that can be as near real time as possible all right that's the concept and let's see how it is done real time through this lab so to begin with we need uh, two buckets so i have here a source bucket and a destination bucket and the source bucket as of now do not have any data in it so as the destination bucket all right so that's one down the second would be to create an iam role all right so let me create an iam role and the role is going to have this policy in it a policy that's allowing get object on the source bucket and a policy that's allowing put object on the destination bucket and uh, here i'm going to use or i'm going to paste my source and destination buckets arn all right go to services go to s3 source bucket all right click on the source bucket and copy the bucket arn so that would be the source bucket arn all right on on the destination bucket copy the destination bucket arn and this is going to be my destination bucket arn so with this i'm going to create a policy all right go to iam and create a policy now i i have already created a policy with the same information all right destination bucket arn and a policy is available with the name s3 bucket copy lambda attach the policy to the role right go to roles create a role lambda is the service that's going to use it in here attach the policy that we have created right give it a name and then create a role now i have a role created as well right copy lambda and that's having the uh, policy that uh, we have created sometime back now create a lambda function right so go to lambda create a function give it a name like s3 bucket copy right choose the role that we want to use 
right that's the row that we want to use copy one to create a function all right and in here we're going to use node uh, js code right i have a sample code this can be used as template in here replace the uh, source bucket with the name of the source bucket and the destination bucket with the name of the destination bucket this is a node.js code that gets run when an event get triggered now what's an event anytime there is a new object placed in the s3 bucket it creates an event and the event triggers lambda and lambda checks the source s3 bucket picks the data puts it in the destination bucket all right paste it here paste it here and click on save all right now before you click on save just ensure that you have the appropriate roles defined that's all you got to do click on save all right now i, I already have created a lambda function all right which is the same thing same code and the role is attached to it now it's running it's active now let's put this to test go to s3 pick the source bucket put some data in it all right and uh, in theory those data should be present in the destination bucket as well there you go it's all done by lambda all right so what did we learn so far we started a discussion with um, the benefits of lambda like we don't have to worry about the server when we use lambda we don't have to worry about scaling for lambda it automatically scales up and scales down we don't have to worry about the cost as well because we're only paying for the seconds the code is running and the, and when the code is not running we're not paying anything to it and then we spoke about uh, what is aws lambda what it contains of and what it can do and then we discussed about the use cases of lambda and then we had a brief discussion about how lambda really works and how it scales up and scales down based on the number of requests that it receives and finally we did a quick lab about how lambda can be used for automatic backups i believe you really would have enjoyed the session about lambda we'll meet again in another aws video learning tutorial like this thank you hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here